Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Social Media Decoded Podcast, the number one podcast to help you understand social media better so that you grow your business, get more clients, and monetize. And today's a special day. As always, when I have guests, I get it really excited, and we're chatting with Lauren. We had like a pre-show. We were chatting it up. I was like, oh my goodness, this this has to go on the podcast. This is such good information. And so today, we're going to be talking all about influencer marketing because it's still a thing. We're going to be talking about affiliate because that is a way that we can make money. And you know that on this podcast, I am all about us making money. So we're going to talk about that. Welcome Lauren to the show. So excited to chat with you today. Oh, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah. So would you give us a little bit of background? Let the listeners know a little bit more about you, where you're from and about your business. And how did you get started with social media, influencer marketing, all the things? Sure. So uh, I'm Lauren. I am born and raised in the city of Chicago and currently using the Wi-Fi network in Orlando because uh, taxes are much better here. Let's just let's be honest. And it's summer year round. Um, I ended up moving to Orlando because I was working for the Walt Disney Company. I was an innovation producer as well as on their business development team at Disney Institute and uh, eventually found myself with my own agency. Uh, called Mongoose Media, and then expanded to doing a few e-commerce brands myself. But uh, this whole journey uh, started probably when I was five, and then has just continued to evolve to where I'm, we're going to say 21. Just leave it, pretend I'm 21. <laughs> no, we can tell our real age, because I'm definitely a millennial. Ah, I'm Larry Bird. That's how I tell people. I'm Larry Bird. So if you're not a basketball fan, you can look him up. <laughs> No, I love that. But I, we want to know more about definitely Disney. That's like an awesome, 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 amazing story. Like I, I just went to Disney not too long ago. And guess what? I am from Chicago. I did not know you were from Chicago. We did not start that off. I am from Chicago. So that is amazing. I love meeting other Chicago people, but you are now in Orlando. That's so cool. But yeah, definitely tell us more about Disney, what was that experience like and how has it helped you in your current, you know, social media and influencer marketing, all the things? Yeah, absolutely. So, well, Disney, when you hear Disney, you're like, wow, major company, huge celebrities. I mean, um, when I was at Disney, we had Frozen had just come out. So there was a Frozen Summer of Fun. Josh Gad, who voiced Olaf, was a part of so many activation campaigns and leveraging, you know, Adina Menzel and all these celebrities for in-park activations at Walt Disney World was huge. And what I think was really amazing about working for the Walt Disney company, I was on their in-house idea agency. So essentially I was, I was paid to be a grown up five-year-old, like just come up with the big ideas. What if was basically my job description? Like what if we turn Cinderella's castle into a Elsa frozen suite? What if this kind of world that I lived in? And so I wasn't bound by parameters of budget. I wasn't restricted by limitations of story, at least in the beginning, right? It was this like blue sky brainstorming again, like what would your best five-year-old self envision? Like I got to be part of a project where how do we reinvent the 12 to 14 year old experience on a Disney cruise ship? Because they're too old to believe in characters necessarily, but they're too young to be an adult and do grown things on the ship. So if the teenagers or preteens are having a terrible time, it ruins the vacation for the whole family. So having that experience of working with this major brand and tapping into influencers like who are active stars on Disney Channel, which preteens are watching, who are they following? What is their experience like? How are they enjoying it? Leveraging that and seeing the influence across generations because there were preschool campaigns I was a part of. There was grandparent campaigns like they all have very different audiences, but are connected to one central theme of how will that make me feel and who do I trust to share their honest and true opinion of their experience. So that was a really privileged experience that I had um, that I'm grateful that I can bring over to a lot of like the clients we work with at Mongoose Media of just making sure you find someone that really resonates with your brand. Because at Disney, we had a list of who made sense and who didn't make sense because it's a really influential platform. So that was that was a part of my corporate experience, if you will, that I would not trade for anything. Because again, also seeing 
the power of budget, but also let's be honest, the power of legal, because when you have a brand that big, you have a brand with that much more responsibility. So there's like a story integrity line. Like I remember one project got rejected that related to the Incredibles because there was like two lines in a PlayStation video game that had the Incredibles that contradicted to the story that the marketing was telling. And so that was like a huge, nope, do not pass, do not collect go, or sorry, do not collect $200, do not pass go, all that stuff. <laughs> Wow. No, that is so interesting. Thank you so much for sharing your story. We love the amazing stories here of the guests. It's so exciting to see, you know, how people have formed their businesses and like their backgrounds and all that. And that is just so exciting. Um, I want to talk about affiliate marketing and yes. influencer marketing because influencer marketing is still so new of an area. I feel like it's untapped so much territory. I think COVID changed a lot of things, but mm. also affiliate marketing, which people may not really understand or know how to leverage. So let's talk about that. And I know that you at Mongoose Media, you help influencers with affiliate marketing. So tell, tell us about that. So a big thing, if you're unfamiliar with affiliate marketing is uh, essentially like refer a friend, like, you know, those refer a friend programs, but even on Amazon, if you're like, oh my gosh, I love those headphones. They look amazing on you. Here's my Amazon link. Like you can just send the direct URL, but if you go down to Amazon, you can get like three and a half percent or whatever that sale is. And so uh, for influence or affiliate marketing at that level is you are the gateway. You're saying, this is what I recommend. Here's a link so that I can get direct attribution. Where we at Mongoose Media specifically dive into is um, affiliate marketing at the uh, meta shops and Instagram shops level and how like a lot of creators out there uh, will sometimes get paid for their posts or they'll get product in exchange. And where there's actual like leverage available for the creator is how brands can now use that content in a way that's super native and organic that most creators aren't even aware of. And in fact, like most brands don't do because they're sleeping on Instagram and meta shops and creators need to not sleep on it anymore because just like my crystal ball prediction, the way everything is going, we're five years behind China and they have this all mapped out so clearly robustly made that we're just, you know, the tortoise in making our way to this affiliate in-house network. But you'll be able to tag products that you're wearing in your post. Like let's say you love my t-shirt. I can tag the product, no longer just the brand. And what's coming is when you tag that product, there's a direct deep link connection so that I can know if someone made that purchase within a specific attribution window, specific time frame, I can give Lauren credit because she's the one that introduced that shirt. So that's that's where affiliate marketing is going. And so for creators, if you're listening and you're part of the game a little bit, what I want you to be mindful of is if you're partnering, especially with e-commerce brands, like look at the content that if you're getting product in kind, you'll be able to start leveraging and negotiating stronger rates because you tag them, you can tag the product. There will be attribution directly to the sale. It's beta for a very few small number of clients, but my crystal ball prediction is ahead of Black Friday, it's gonna unlock for even bigger influencers and then next year it'll be opened up for more. That's just my, like no gun to the head or anything like that, but my crystal ball prediction of it's already laid out and what's happening in East Asia, we're just catching up. <laughs> Um, and a lot of that became apparent during COVID when I was just like, wow, I thought we were so advanced. I thought we were so far ahead of the times when no, we're not. So the way to predict the future is just by looking in a lot of other countries past. Uh, but for what we help out with is if you're a brand and you're looking to partner with a creator, you give the product in kind, you pay them, they tag the items and brands can start using your posts, not just to like share on social media, but use it as their product page image. So when you're browsing on Instagram, you'll start seeing, you know, oh, here's Lauren and she's she's wearing these glasses from now. That's the product picture, no longer just the social media picture. And where that makes a big difference is conversion. We see huge conversion upticks when people are in the actual environment, like in the wild, using the product, showing people how it's being used, seeing the emotions across their face. That was huge at Disney. We sold emotional experiences, not products. You want the outcome. And so for creators that are listening, like 
starting affiliate, you share an Amazon link that has expanded UTM parameters for you. Getting deeper is you can see that content that you shared being leveraged, not just on social media as a post on Instagram, but on their website, on their Instagram and Facebook shop and so many other places. You just gave us a masterclass on affiliate <laughs> marketing and we can go deeper. So yes, I, and I'm definitely tapping into the affiliate marketing. I got a few under my belt, but there's so much untapped territory. And I agree. It's like, you already use these products share it. And if Instagram is going to, oh, we're going to tag our shirt. Oh, I'm going to be letting y'all know. I already thought about, you know, the Amazon and I did share something that like went crazy. I had so many DMs, like a hundred DMs of people <laughs> um, about this selfie stick where I did a video. It was like a really good, it was because the video was good. It was a, it was a great story, right? I told the story of the, the, the tripod and how it was going to help you in your life as a creator or entrepreneur, because you can take it with you on the go, put it in your book bag, all these things. Yeah. But it would to Amazon, but we know that Amazon is not paying you like. Wait, did you use the Amazon affiliate link for your three and a half percent? Oh yeah. I made, okay. I made, I made a decent amount of money, like probably a yeah. hundred dollars. But again, it's not like you're like, you're saying we can get more of a cut different yeah. ways, like yep. with affiliate marketing. So that's, that's, coming. that's what I'm like. Well, that's the way news. that, Meta is building up this exchange network is it's a win, win, win all around because Meta is going to take their cut, right? You have an Instagram shop. The only way that you can have a, a shop. So it's exclusive to e-commerce, like physical products right now, but you have to enable um, Meta to get their 5%. So they're saying, Hey, you know, you don't have to worry about your website. People can buy directly from your Instagram. Your Instagram page is your website. So they're like, but we're going to keep 5%, right? They negotiated the deal. And then for creators, creators are going to tag. I mean, as creators, we tag the brands because we want them to notice us so that we can start the conversation. Instead, you can say, hey, brand, I'm tagging the product. I want you to see me using your product. I'm cutting out 80% of that introductory conversation. And so then I can tag it. You can see it out in the wild. And then the brand is like, wow, look at this UGC, user-generated content, this like actual lifestyle image of someone using our products. This is amazing. Hey, yeah, you know, because Lauren tagged us, we'll, we'll agree. There's probably gonna be a pre-negotiated 5%. There's no longer having to send a URL. And if someone drops the URL and all the other stuff that can happen that currently happens for affiliate marketers, because not everyone clicks on the link, they forget, they, they Google it or they buy something similar, like rude. You didn't give me that credit, but I understand. We're busy, but that's, that's literally when people don't use my affiliate link. link. Oh. When people don't use my affiliate link, I'm like, girl, I'm the one who told you about it, but you didn't even use it. Yeah. Why? Like, Why do me like that? It's only, it's only $6 I'm getting. I'm, I, I'm, I told you about it. No, I'm just joking. If you, if you use my affiliate link, I know y'all been using my stand link. Shout out to Stan because <laughs> I know y'all been using my stand link. So, but that I agree. It's hard. It's, it's like where you say, like, it's still in this infancy stage because there's so much of a burden on the creator. The creator doesn't have access to sales. That sucks. You, you know, the impact you make, you can see it from the engagement, from the comments, and you know, more people bought because of you, even if they didn't use your affiliate link and that like loss of data hurts because the creator is like, should I keep going? How do I make this better? You're just at a production phase, not an optimizing phase. And we want to get to this like next level of optimization where it's like, Hey, this worked, but I can make it even better, Bet, give it to me one more time. I'm going to do even stronger. Cause then you are only going to be limited as the creator by how much content you produce, because why wouldn't you make more if you know that you can do I produce content, it generates sales. I'm going to keep producing content because it's going to keep generating sales. It's a win-win for the brand because they're just getting this new influx of new customers. And for the creator, they're getting this exchange of information, which right now, going back to what you said earlier, it is still in an infancy stage. Like there's not a lot of people that have gotten into this space. And it's so apparent because of like obvious and may I say antiquated barriers of entry. Yeah, still so much, still so much time. So that leads into the next, the next question, 
give us three things. If anyone on here is thinking about, okay, I want to tap into affiliate marketing. I'm an influencer. You know, this is great. Even some UGC because that is definitely popular. I've been seeing UGC, all type of pages on Twitter. I have put out, I think I put out a call for UGC and I kind of was overwhelmed because there were like a hundred responses and they, everyone had like, a, a temp a media kit with like their their work so it is I know it's money being made that's what I'm saying so yeah give us three tips if someone is you know wanting to tap into this market and they're thinking about it as a, a way to make extra income in their business because that is important here on the social media decoded podcast we are creating multiple income streams absolutely and like using using products and testing products and being um a person with valuable feedback, that's worth money to brands. Uh, So three things that I would recommend. One, uh, there are are already some influencer networks that you can get a part of. Like uh, Billow is one that we recommend to our clients. And I'll send you the URLs. You can put it in the links. Um, But you can have this exchange network where brands say, hey, I'll give you product in kind for content in return. That's an easy place where you start because having a portfolio makes a difference in what your ask is. You have to be able to provide insight to increase your ask of what you're wanting to receive in exchange. So if you want to get $800 for a single post, a friend of mine, her brother, $14,000 for an Instagram story. How can he ask that much for a story that disappears? One, not like a cattle, a cow, sorry, carousel of story. That's one, because he can use the data back behind it. And again, I recognize that if you're just starting it, there's a data drought. You don't have that transparency. And some brands stink. They lie. They won't be honest about the uptick of sales. But you can enter some small Instagram influencer marketplaces where you can do products in exchange. And then you develop the relationship with the brands where you can say, hey, how did this do? I'd like to have a benchmark. So if you're looking to start, uh, you want to build up a portfolio that shows measurable impact. Even if it's like a friend of yours brand, just say like, hey, like I'm willing to try, you know, I have Asian beauty essentials. They're like, Lauren, I'm willing to try like two face masks. I'm like, great. Here's our base level of current KPI engagement. If your post can generate more engagement than my current base, that I'll pay you. And then you can say like, I'll just send me your product. Let me prove myself. And that's where you're getting started. You need to build this case study and then you can, can show additional examples thereon. And then you can say, okay, hey, now um, I'm looking at like Panda Planner, right? You go to Panda Planner, hey, Panda Planner, this is the base benchmark that the brand had before. This is what I was able to deliver. I'd love to also do this for you. And if I don't improve the engagement, don't pay. Just send me this product and I'll, I'll buy it in return or whatever those types of pieces are. You can start to build it. But like the biggest thing, if you're just starting, Get a portfolio that shows measurable impact. Content is amazing, but if content doesn't get engaged with or seen, it's like, did a tree fall in the woods? Um, And then the third thing I would just say is that like, it's the relationship with the brands because a lot of these small business owners, like some of the brands we work with, they're seven, eight figure brands and their teams of three or four, they're exhausted. They don't have time to do consumer research. So if you can say like, hey, I'd like to do this post for you, I charge $100 for a post. Here's my current breakout of my audience. It's skewed mostly female. I will say, as someone who looks at accounts like this, a lot of amazingly stunning humans will have audiences that are skewed international towards one gender, which is not the ideal customer for that product. So make sure that you're coming to audiences. Like if you're a female with like 90% men, in their forties and you partner with an auto brand, great. Maybe that, that caters to that demographic stronger, but like play to your audience and overshare on what data you have. Cause it's this give first, receive more kind of mentality. Like, Hey, I had six DMS that reached out specific. How can I give them additional information? Like you act as almost a customer service conduit for that first initial engagement. And then you say, hey, this worked really, really well. What did you see as an impact? And it stinks, but right now the burden's on the creator. So if you're gonna do this, you know, set up a portfolio with measurable numbers, develop a connection with the brand and make sure you're coordinating with brands that are in respect to your audience. 
Those are my three things. Oh, that was another masterclass and such great advice. Definitely agree. It is a really still s- such an infancy stage that we are in yeah. when it comes to influencer marketing and affiliate marketing. Because when I tell you, I just tapped into affiliate marketing and I'm not, I'm not done. So there's mm-hmm. so much more opportunity, um, failed, missed opportunities. We have blogs, we have Pinterest, we can go on and on and talk about these things, but there's know that there's opportunity. Okay. Know that you can go to Lauren when you need help with affiliate marketing. Okay. So now is one of my favorite parts of the podcast. We would love to hear about any amazing books or resources that have helped you along your entrepreneur journey. This has been like such a great episode. And I know that you have some books that are going to wow us. Yeah. So um, two, I mean, I'm a bibliophile. I don't like any words that end in file because it like makes me seem that it's like bad because but like I Goodreads is if you want to know me, you look at my Goodreads profile. But if you like actually want to have a conversation, like DM me on like Instagram or like LinkedIn. But um, two of the books that I'd recommend, uh, they're they're kind of big, so forgive me. Um, but one is Influence: The Psychology of Persuasion. Um, this is really good because uh, people use the word algorithm a lot when I think they should use the word audience. We think that the algorithm is is hurting us or like the algorithm doesn't like our content. No, your audience doesn't like your content. And what I like about influence is it, it goes deeper into like how you can connect. I was like, my camera seems to this such a lot. It goes deeper into how you connect with your audience and resonate with them in a way that truly drives influence. Um, and the second book, okay, my microphone keeps on. Uh, the second book is called Trust Me, I'm Lying. Ryan Holiday has written a few of these, a few books, um, but I love it because it's, so it's like literally a playbook into the dark arts of exploitive media. So again, going into the psychology of persuasion and how you can start weeding out the messages you're hearing and what you're actually receiving. But then also when you start pitching to brands, you can pitch to brands that you want to work with in a way that they feel the confidence and the measurable impact that you're going to provide. Without lying, I mean, the title is Trust Me, I'm Lying, but it goes deep into like what you're saying and what they're hearing, how different they can be. And if you can have that alignment to what you want the message to be received as, it will add commas to your bank account. Oh, bar drop. It will add commas to your bank account. I love that. This has been (laughs) such a great episode. No, those are some amazing books. Definitely. I've I've read the influence book. I need to, I'm going to go over to my bookshelf right now, pull that back on out read through it again because there's something in there that I that I need to read again but no this has been such a really great episode thank you so much for dropping so many amazing gems but before we head out definitely let the listeners know where can we follow you online where can where can we find out more about you more about your agency we would love to connect with you yeah so my agency is mongoosemedia.us I when I started I was too cheap to buy the dot com full 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 disclosure dot us um, and then uh, my socials are all at Lauren E. Petrullo because there's a really smart, beautiful, blonde monkey doctor who has her PhD. She's wonderful and beat me to all the social media channels. Awesome. Definitely. We'll make sure we put all that information down below in the show notes. Thank you so much, Lauren, for coming on today and sharing so many amazing gems. And if you all love this episode, don't forget to tag me on Instagram at Michelle L. Thames. Let me know what you think think about the podcast thank you all so much for sending me your amazing dms i think i'm going to start a series where i read the amazing dms that i get from each of you about this podcast thank you all so much and we will talk to you in the next one peace